So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. You know it, sir. Amazing. No, I mean, you know it, sir. This movie's mostly comprised of scenes from popular movies you're definitely familiar with. Oh, well, if those movies are popular, that should translate into this one being popular as well. If my calculations are correct, that's exactly right. Sick. So we're gonna start the movie with some big old lady space parts. What was that? And a big ship flies through the lady parts. Uh, traveling through space privates is tight. And there are some bad guys heading to this moon called Velt, where the main character, Korra, is doing some slow-mo farming. The farming is slow-mo? Oh, yeah, everything's slow-mo, sir. That's the secret to making movies feature length. What about, like, story or character development? No, it's the slow-mo. That's how you get the runtime. Oh, good to know. So anyway, this big bad guy, Admiral Noble, goes up to the leader of this farming village and does a slightly altered version of that opening scene from Inglorious Bastards. Great scene. Great scene. Yeah, he's got a Nazi uniform and everything. Why disguise it? It's good as is. And he says he's gonna force this whole town to grow him a bunch of grain so he can feed his troops. This big bad guy's doing crop negotiations? Yeah, okay, and then he leaves a bunch of soldiers behind to oversee this whole thing. Okay. But then these soldiers are about to take advantage of this local girl, so Cora reveals she's secretly been a badass this whole time and kills them all. Oh boy. Yeah, and there's this robot that was with the bad guys, but he helps her out and he's actually a good robot now and he's got an amazing voice. Interesting. I want to hear more about this robot. Well, too bad. He runs away and doesn't return till the end of the movie. Oh, dang it. So now the whole town is like, oh, very cool. Cora's good at punching. Sure sounds that way. So she's like, well, the only way to stop this bad guy in his giant planet-destroying ship is for me to go recruit a couple of reluctant warriors. That makes sense. It does, yeah. So her and this guy Gunner go do an alternate version of the cantina scene from A New Hope. Great scene. Great scene. And they meet an alternate version of Han Solo named Kai, who's gonna help them out for money. Star Wars is a great movie. I'm glad we're doing it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what do they do? Well, this guy takes them on an alternate Millennium Falcon to go recruit their first warrior dude, Tarek. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but he's currently a slave, so the slave owner is like, I tell you what, if he can tame this wild beast, you can have him. But if he can't, I get to keep you as slaves. Why would they agree to that? So they agree to that. Oh, my God. Yeah, because see, they were told that this guy is a beast tamer, so they, you know, risk everything on that. Well, okay, then. So then this guy is going to do an alternate version of that hippogriff scene from Harry Potter. Potter. Great scene. Great scene. And then Buckby kills the slave owner and they take off. Very exciting. So on the next planet, they meet this other warrior, Nemesis, who has an alternate version of lightsabers. Great weapons. Great weapons. And so then she kills this big spider lady and they all take off to the next planet. Wait, did they even ask her to join? I mean, probably off screen or something. I don't know. All right. So then they go recruit the next person. So just to be sure, this is like a montage you're describing, right? Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is the movie. Are you sure? Because this just sounds like that one scene in every heist movie where they like get the team together. Yeah, but with slow motion, we will meet our runtime target. Okay. So they go see this General Titus guy who is dirty, but then showers and joins them. So is it gonna be like fun banter between all the members of this growing team? Ah, no. Oh. Yeah, no, once you're on the team, you stand quietly in the background as others are recruited. Gotcha. So next they go recruit this guy, Darian Bloodaxe, and he has a sister and they both run a rebellion or something. So he joins? He joins and he brings a couple of people with him and now it's time for the final fight. Wait, Wait, do we, like, learn stuff about people? Oh, yeah, we'll see. At a certain point, Cora's gonna tell her entire story to Gunner. See, it turns out she was, like, raised by the space Nazis, and she was one of their top people, but now she's good. She's not She's not in them with them anymore. What inspires her to share that? Well, she tells him, I am telling you this so that you know my story. Subtle. So then that Kai guy is like, hey, you silent people who have each individually displayed one skill have inspired me to become good. Oh, nice. Yeah, but then turns out he's not good, he's bad, and he betrays them and sells them out to the Empire or whatever alternate name I come up with. Oh no! So the bad guys trap the good guys in these mechanism things and Kai tells Gunner to paralyze Korra. What do you mean? Well there's like this little gun thing, right? And if you put it in a hole, it shoots right into the person's neck. Uh oh, well it's gonna be tough for him to get out of that situation if they're all surrounded by bad guys. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, cause see another thing about this mechanism is that if you turn this gun the opposite way, it releases the prisoner and then you could kind of use it as a weapon. So he frees Korra and kills Kai. Wait, they designed that thing that way. So then one by one, they free all the good guys and get into a big fight. Were they surrounded by bad guys with guns pointing at them? Yeah, but see, none of them can aim because they're kind of like alternate stormtroopers, I guess. Great bad guys. Great bad guys. And then there's this big old fight and freaking Darian, he dies. Oh no, Darren, Darren. Which one? 
Who was that? One of them. Oh no! And then Korra gets into a big fight with Noble and manages to kill him. Well, good for her. <laughs> Except the bad guys bring him back to life, so he's gonna be back for part two. Don't you worry about that. That's a good cliffhanger. Are they gonna be able to defeat this guy they've killed once already? So then all the good guys go back to that moon, and that robot has antlers now. Cool. And so that's it for part one. What do you think? Well, it sounds like some content for sure. I just wonder if there's a way to capitalize on this a bit more. Well, this is gonna be Zack Snyder, and you know what his fans like. Snyder cuts. Yeah, let's purposefully release a non-Snyder cut first. Very sneaky. I love it. Let's hack this version to bits. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thank you for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you enjoyed it. And listen, I, I want to be transparent with you, alright? Alright, see you next time.